Ugh, today we get to see another instance of an officer purposely put in a situation for which he has no recourse. Hi friends, welcome to today's bonus badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host as always, John Correa, with me, 30-year law enforcement officer, Mike Williver. Today's video comes to us from Milpitas, California. Today's video brought to you by New Way Ford. New Way helps people all over the country find the right new or used car at the best price with incredible service. We bought Mrs. Asp's 2021 Bronco Sport from New Way and I'm a satisfied customer. If you see me rolling in my New Way Ford F-150, come say hi and let New Way give you a quote on your next vehicle purchase. Officers have been called here to reports of a man who has stabbed his stepdad. If you go read the news stories I've linked in the description, uh, his stepdad has taken knives away from him when he has been homicidal on multiple occasions, suicidal as well. It's got a long history here. In this particular case, though, he stabbed his stepfather a couple of times, uh, not with life-threatening injuries, thankfully. And then his stepfather and mom ran into their bedroom and locked it, called officers for help. They are responding here right now. We have Officer Ali's ca body camera. Let's listen in to what he says and how he interacts. Don't do that, man. Don't do that. You're going to get tased. You're going to get tased. Hey. Stop! I got me. Kill me! Kill me! Shot fire! Shot fire! Shot fire! This is the body camera of Officer Brazil. We have audio on this one as well. Police! Put the knife down! Subject's by himself, not complying, still holding the knife. I'm gonna die today. Put the knife down, no one wants to hurt you. Sir, I'm gonna die today. I just stabbed my father. Line of fire, you're gonna be southbound. You want to be alive, sir? I don't want to hurt anyone else, officer. I don't want to hurt you, man. Just please put the knife down and come on out. We can work through this. Please put the knife down and come on out, man. Please put the knife down, man. I don't want to hurt you. We can work through whatever happened. We can work through it. Just put the knife down. Please put the knife down, man. I don't want to hurt you. Welcome to L310. Just advise our repeat to stay inside. Put the knife down, man. Come on in. Can you walk towards me? Hey, stop. Don't walk away. So just walking away south now. Hey, stop right there, man. Stop. Hey. Stop. I got lethal. Kill me. Put the knife down. As you can see, officers did try to render aid to the best of their ability once they got him down with the knife. Uh, you heard him ask them to kill him, and unfortunately, he got his wish. Uh, these officers, I think, did the best they could, but let's think lessons. God, this one, this one tugs at my heartstrings. And, and let me say at the outset, I think that we should have more and robust mental health services available long before this becomes an issue. But, I mean, at some point, Mike, you do what you got to do. Yeah, I mean, if you're putting that quarter force to do what you got to do, you do it. It doesn't make it a good outcome. It just sucks all the way around. Yeah, let's think about lessons. All right, this is obviously not the kind of outcome that we want. Very negative outcome all the way around. So let's talk about where, you know, maybe some tactical stuff in here. But of course, from the perspective of mental health care, I, I think I just encourage every family, do the best you can to try to get as much help for your loved ones as you can before this. Because when you get to this kind of crisis situation, like we see all the time, this 19-year-old in crisis has a definitive, uh, you know, part to play in the outcomes here, and it goes bad. Yeah, John, I, I, this, this is just heartbreaking every time we see one of these videos. And, you know, uh, we both have family members who have mental health issues they're, they're dealing with. My, my is my late brother who ended up killing himself. And uh, there's, there's, just, there's just so much you can do for someone who's determined to take their own life. And unfortunately, he's, he's bringing other people into the equation. Yeah, bad stuff. Now, let's start from a tactics perspective here that Officer Ali is the first one who makes contact with this guy as he's coming his way. And the officer has his taser out couple things on this one. Number one, with if he doesn't know that the other officer is is there with a lethal cover, the taser's probably not a good choice here. Uh, agreed. Uh, I don't like 
I honestly don't like anybody with a taser in the situation. He's got a couple layers of clothing on. He's armed. I just don't like a taser at all in the situation. I know people are going to disagree with me. Uh, just because he can, he can get so quickly to you and the taser is so, yeah. it's just not a sure thing to the extent that I, I don't want to be standing here with a taser when right. there's someone as determined as he is to do harm to other people in order to have them kill him. And now, of course, again, this is one of my reasons that I actually really like, even if you're carrying a taser, carry an OC spray, right? The OC spray, the clothes are not going to create problems for that. And you might be able to get a big enough unit to have that kind of range to get this guy from this kind of range that maybe changes this one. Second thing I'm going to say here is if you notice, man, it gets really fast that you get in the backstop of your fellow officer. And so, yes, you're trying to talk to the suspect, but always be cognizant because the last thing you want out of this is a Taliban wedding ceremony. It, it happens in the real world. I can't say I've never ended up in a position similar to that in the field. It, it does happen, but you have to mitigate it to the, to the extent that you can. And I feel like the officer whose badge camera we're watching, I think has some room to his right to maneuver out of the way. So it's kind of on him. The other, the other officer has a lethal cover up. It's on this officer to, to scoot and get out of the way to the extent that he can. And I think you're right. I don't think, you know, it's a real world situation. It's fluid. It's, it's yeah. changing all the time. You're not always going to have a chance to not be in each other's backstop, but, but recognizing, Hey, that partner over there has a gun and I do not want to be in his backstop specifically and particularly because some cops can't shoot real good and you don't want to get shot by him. Not only that, John, but you don't want to be the reason he can't shoot because he's worried about hitting you. Oh, it's a great reminder. Thanks for that, Mike. Now, as it keeps going here, I want us to recognize that he's going to try here to get after this guy. They want the best outcome, and but I want to recognize and just stop for a moment and talk about what our perp ends up saying here. He asks to be killed. He, he knows this, and I know a lot of people are going to look at this and say, well, that means he doesn't really mean the officer harm. I don't think we can say that in any capacity whatsoever. He is going to do that which is going to get the outcome that he wants. And I think that that is terrible because, again, using uh, you know uh, an officer that will wreck their career, wreck their life. But, of course, these folks in the moment aren't thinking about all that. They're only thinking about the pain in their own soul. And so, as an officer, you got to do what you got to do to protect yourself. As you said there a moment ago, John, uh, no amount of... A foreknowledge of the fact this guy wants to die that day uh, is going to protect you from eventually having to take, uh, yeah. having to resort to deadly force. Because at some point, he's going to do, he's going to escalate his actions until he gets you to do what he wants you to do. And that's what he did here, yeah, yeah. 100%. Now, I want to talk about the taser one last bit. You can actually see on the middle of this perp's overshirt what looks very much to me like the green laser from the X26 that he's got there. Or that might be a Series 7, actually. Maybe the newest one. But uh, regardless, a shot with a taser on a moving target uh, that is uh, moving right to left and wearing heavy clothes. This is a very low percentage shot, which I'm all about a taser. I think when it's employed correctly, it's 100% effective, but you got to know when to put it in the holster and go to something else like an OC spray to try to get this guy to do something different. Uh, never mind how close you have to be with a taser to employ it properly. Right. Uh, I don't want to be that close to somebody who is clearly in this kind of distress and is armed and is, you know, is, is escalating the situation. Yeah. He's just too close for my comfort. And I'm all about about less lethal tools and the taser again when properly employed works great but you got to get both barbs in and in this case given everything that's there very difficult to do and and uh, you know yeah the, the thing about OC OC spray if properly employed here OC spray would have prevented him from being able to see what he's running at OC absolutely could have possibly very likely have neutralized this guy's ability to do what he's doing. If you can't see where you can't see where you're going, it's really hard to stab someone. So I'm a big fan of pepper spray in these situations. I mean, I, I for some reason lately, we just haven't seen it being used nearly as much as, as the taser. So uh, if you're out there listening, if you're in this situation, if you've got a good, reliable, especially a stream or a forcible conical mist pepper spray, try it. Try it. If it doesn't work, you're, you're right back where you started. So no harm, no foul. And I do think this is why I like a stream. A stream can reach out and touch somebody from a little ways away, and that gives you a little bit of standoff distance, which is a margin for safety. So I, again, I'm not against a taser. I think that it has an absolute place in law enforcement use, but an OC spray does too. And I think having both of those tools at your disposal is wise. Now, everything goes wrong here, of course, and we see them you know, end up shooting this guy, and that's terrible. Now, 
Let's talk about uh, the other officer here. And, and Mike, I do think that he really tried pretty darn hard to de-escalate this situation. So when we talk about de-escalating in this case, if we can, nobody's in immediate danger. So we try to isolate, contain, evacuate anyone we can, and then negotiate. Then of course, what you're gonna do in this instance, if you possibly can, you gotta make contact. And that means they, they were able to make contact here. He's communicating with them. Then you gotta build rapport with him. And I know the one thing I would say here, step around your badge. It's real easy for you to go, no, I'm just talking to you as a person. Use your first name. Hey man, what's your name? My name's Jim. You know, let me help you a little bit, bro. I want to, you know, we, we can get out of this, but tell me why you're hurting so bad today. You know, a lot of uh, agents I used to work with, officers, deputies, etc. cetera, they, they kind of discounted rapport building as being important. It's not just important in this situation, officers. It's important all the time. If you can get someone to like you a little bit, trust you a little bit, it yeah. goes a long, long way. Yeah, try Hey, man, what's your first name? Right here, you got enough time. I'm not faulting him. Don't get me wrong. No, he's he great with what he had in the moment. He has, he has a plenty of distance to even almost to holster his gun. Not quite, but at least put the gun down in front of you and let him see your face and try to make a connection. Now, this guy's thinking was pretty contaminated. The odds of that right. working are probably fairly slim, but it couldn't hurt. Just like the OC spray, it couldn't hurt to try. I will say this, I've linked in the description to the actual DA's investigation, and the only thing this officer said he did not remember was drawing his own taser. So he sees this coming here, he has his firearm in his right hand, his taser in his left hand, and he said on the report, I did not remember drawing my taser at all. Okay, so of course we say that's not a good thing, right? We don't wanna draw our taser when we have a handgun in our hand. The way I think to combat that if you have a gun in your hand, put both hands on the gun and keep both hands on that gun, and that will keep you from doing something like this. 100% agree with that sentiment, John. And I'll tell you, on the Ask podcast, I'm hearing time and again, not just from law enforcement, but from private citizen defenders, that they, things happen and things went down during these events they don't remember. So you've just got to train to the point where you can't get this wrong. I think your training is probably pretty good at this agency, but pretty good. the fact that you got two similar weapons in, in your hand at the same time is bad juju. It, it could lead to an accidental discharge. It could lead to you using a taser when you should have been using a firearm. Well, and human memory is a weird thing. So I don't fault this officer for not remembering that sure. he drew his taser because we see that in actual defensive encounters all the time, exactly mm -hmm. like you said. Uh, the way that we do that is we, we train to this place and we say, no, if I have a gun in my hand, I can't have anything else in my hand. If I have a gun in my hand, I can't have anything else in my hand. And of course, his partner over on the left side does have the taser out, so he has that non-lethal cover to try. I, I, I really think maybe this is just an exemplary of this guy trying, what can I do to not end up shooting this kid? And I think that that is exemplary. Again, though, it's going to cause him a significant problem that we're gonna see show up here in just a second. And that is when he recognizes, oh no, he's charging me with the knives. Then what we're gonna see is exactly what we see here. He brings the gun up and now he has to take shots to defend his life with a really poor support hand grip. And notice that his partner is just barely off to the left. Very difficult spot here, and, and this is why even if you did draw something, you've got to train yourself to drop whatever is in your support hand when the time for shooting comes. You know, as he came down the side of this uh, apartment building here, I'm sure he probably thought this guy's probably not gonna double back, come back the way where he was before. But as, as an officer, you have to sometimes resist the urge to get in close to stuff. You wanna control the scene, you wanna control yeah. things. And I think maybe in the situation, him not getting quite that far down, hey, hey, partner, where is he right now? Which direction is he going? Mm. And let your partner communicate with you what's happening. Can the, can the other guy, can this young man hear you saying that? Well, of course, but who cares? Yeah, but who cares? The fact is you're not so close to the action that you end up having to backpedal and you end up having to shoot a firearm with another uh, less lethal option in your other hand. Yeah, so sometimes not compressing the problem and getting rid of your discretionary time is the answer. Now, of course, Look here when the first shot breaks. So I, I think this shot is 100% justified. I have no problems whatsoever. A guy who has shown that he's just stabbed his father-in-law um, is, is clearly trying to commit suicide by cop and chasing you down with a knife, I think is a justified shoot. But notice that his partner is ever so close to his backstop. Mm -hmm. And of course, if most people struggle uh, you know, with shooting, it is that low left push for a right-handed shooter. And where is his partner? Low and left. So uh, man, the only safe backstop is the perp. And, and he can't make, a, our, our officer here can't make a big hard step to the left, but keeping out of each other's backstop is serious business. Think about the last time you went to the range folks and had some low left or any, any shot that didn't go exactly where you wanted it to go. 
when you did that, were you stationary on a flat range with a paper target? Yeah. None of those apply here. He's backing up. He's under stress. His adrenaline's pumping. And he has a, this is really is as close to a razor thin margin for errors oh I've ever seen on one of these batch camps. So uh, you just, or his partner just needed to get the heck out of the way. But I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's seen this video and wishes he had, but you know, uh, turns out no harm, no foul for the other officer. And last thing here, I really think you can see the urgency in the officer here. I have sped it up for the sake of time, but, but they really are trying to save this young man's life. And, and just as a reminder, no officer wants to end up taking the life of somebody like this, particularly a suicide by cop. Because, you know, this guy is only doing that because the chemicals in his brain are making him do it. And, and that doesn't mean he was any less of a threat. But it does mean that these officers are doing the very best they can. Yes, keep your medical on your person. Yes, know how to use it and use it well. Do the best you can. I, I think these officers were put in a terrible situation. And I, I wish and, and hope that they make a full recovery emotionally from it.